this is uh, Friends and Family Day today, and we want to thank the Lord and for blessing us that we are able to be a, a part of it. We want to worship God in the spirit and in truth. At this time, we're going to uh, ask for those that are, have something on their heart that they want to share with this group. I uh, want to just go to God in prayer for themselves. If you have something on your heart that you uh, want to share with this group, we're going to sing another verse of a song, and then we want to let your request be made known. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over Falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Simonsons this morning will be traveling. They was asking for special prayers, so we want to continue to pray for them. Pray for all of those that are traveling on the dangerous highways. Let us bow and go to God in prayer and pray together. Yeah. Our Father in heaven, we bow before you, thanking you, Father, for your many blessings. Thanking you, Father, for blessing us that we are able to come together today. Father, your servants have stood this morning and asked for special prayers. Uh, some have have family members that are going through uh, some trials and tribulations, some that have been in accidents, uh, special prayer for our senior citizens, special prayer for those that are traveling on the highway, Father. Yes, you continue to be with us, guide and protect us. You go before us, Father, and pay the way for us. Mm -hmm. Bless us, Father, that we'll be able to do your will. Uh, in Jesus' name, we do ask this. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good, morning. good to see you on this good friends and family day. Hey, y'all can mute this one for me, please. Meet me, and I woke up this morning with my mind still on Jesus. Is that all right this morning? Yeah. Need you to lift your lift your voice on this morning. Amen. I woke up this morning with my mind. You know it was still long. I'm so glad that I woke up this morning with my and my mind it was still.
God is real. Is alive. Our God is alive. He even killed me early this morning. Our God is alive. There is the allegation of love. Our God comes still from human side. A need to discover the heavenly hue and friend the world with his great mind. There is a God. He is alive. And if we live and we survive from the start. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, this is a question we were in. Uh, it's a little spiritual in the park. All Sopranos. All um, two, three, four of y'all. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's bringing you Come on, Sopranos. I hear you. He's bringing you out. Keep patiently waiting. For the Lord, for the Lord to bring you out. Yeah, I tell you. He's bringing you out. Keep patiently, keep patiently. 
praying for something for days months years some of us and we just keep praying and we cry and we pray and we cry and we pray and we cry anybody ever been there in your life but the bible says that they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint listen i want to encourage you to understand that if you wait on god everything is going to be all right so i need y'all to sing that for me Keep paying, keep paying, keep paying, keep patient. Look at your neighbor in their eye, and I need you to tell them this. Keep patient, keep patient, keep patient, keep patient. Keep patient, live. Just 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 keep patient, live. God's gonna come through, but keep patient, live. It's gonna be alright. Just keep patient, live. You're gonna be healed. Just keep patient, live. Just keep patient, live. Lord, just keep patient, live. Just keep patient, live. I'm gonna end this thing up. Just keep patiently waiting. Hey, for the Lord, for the Lord to bring you friends and family. <laughs> uh, today's scripture will be taken from the book of Psalms. Psalms 91 and verses 1 and 2. It's the book of Psalms chapter 91 verses 1 and 2. If all found, let us read. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him I will trust. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Now let's go to God and a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, we thank you once again for, for last night's laying down and this morning's waking up, Heavenly Father. We know that every day is not promised to us, Heavenly Father, but you have allowed us to come together to worship thee in thy name, Heavenly Father. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, just to continue to bless this church, Heavenly Father. Uh, bless the friends and the family that were able to, to come with, uh, and worship with us, Heavenly Father. Please give them the understanding and, uh, with, their, with open ears, Heavenly Father. They may be able to learn uh, what, thou must, what we must do to be saved, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your dear son, Jesus, who came down to this earth, Heavenly Father, who shed his blood on a cruel cross of Calvary, Heavenly Father. They, uh, it was his blood that, that was shed for our sins, Heavenly Father. We, we may be able to be able to have the right to the tree of life, the Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to bless uh, the, the, the leadership of this church, the Heavenly Father. We ask that you, uh, that you give us the wisdom and the acknowledgement to be able to lead the flock, the Heavenly Father, on the right path that you have us to do. And we ask, the Heavenly Father, that you just continue to bless this church. And we know that there's, you know, people that's going to be struggling uh, through life, the Heavenly Father, but we know nowhere to get to the crown, the Heavenly Father. They're, we're going to have to go through some things, yeah, yeah. and the Heavenly Father, and it's through uh, your grace and mercy, the Heavenly Father, that yeah. we're able to, to get through it, yeah. and we thank you for that. Yeah. And we ask the Heavenly Father that you be with the speaker of the hour, yeah. crown his head with wisdom, yeah. and uh, get, give him the words that we may be able to hear and, and be able to spread the word throughout the community, Heavenly Father. And we ask these and all of the blessings in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Exalted, and every mountain and hill would be brought low, and the rough places will be made smooth, and the crooked places straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all God's flesh shall see it together. We know this is the day that the Lord has made, and may we all rejoice and be glad in it, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Had Christ not rose from the dead, our worship today will be in vain. But if you ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. And so we find that on the first day of the week when the disciples, they came together to break bread, Paul being ready to depart from them, spoke to them until midnight. And we find in the book of Matthew in the 26th chapter, when Jesus had finished these sayings, he said to his disciples, you know, in two days is the Passover feast and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then assembled the scribes, the chief priests, and the elders of the community unto the palace of the high priest called Siaphas. And they plotted to take Jesus by trickery to kill him. But they said, no, not during the Passover, at least there'd be an upper amongst the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, 
there came upon him a woman with an alabaster flask of costly oil, and she poured it over his head as he sat at the table to eat meat. When the disciples saw this, they became overcome with indignation, saying, Why the waste? For this fragrance oil could have been sold for much. When Jesus became aware of this, he said, Why do you trouble yourself with this woman? For she did it for my burial. For you will have the poor with you always, but me, I will not always be here. Therefore, I say unto you, what this woman has done today will also be told as a memorial unto her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked them, How much are you willing to give me if I deliver him unto you? And they counted him thirty pieces of silver. And from that time on, Judas sought opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the disciples went to Jesus and asked him, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover? And he said, Go into a city, and a man, a certain man who is carrying a jar of water will meet you. And say to the, him that the master teacher, which means, he, which means master in Hebrew, that they will keep the Passover at your house with you. So the disciples did just as Jesus had commanded them. They prepared the Passover. Now when evening had come, he had sat down with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said to them, One of you will betray me. And then each of them became exceedingly sorrowful, saying, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He who dips his hand in this dish with me will betray me. For the Son of Man goes just as it is written. But woe unto the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better that he had not been born. Then Judas, who was betraying him, said, Lord, is it I? And he said, Just as you have said. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and broke it and blessed it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Drink from it, all of you. For this blood is the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of his sins. Let us bow. Gracious Father, we are so thankful for this day because this is the day that you have set aside, O oh Heavenly Father. You have set this day aside so that your children, that your sheep will hear your voice. They will hear you calling them, O oh Lord, to come and worship you, O oh Heavenly Father. So Lord, we are, we are thankful, O oh Heavenly Father, that we're here today. And we're here not by mistake, O oh Lord, but by this is the we, you order of our steps, O oh Lord. You want us to be here, O oh Heavenly Father. We just thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you for calling us, O oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for giving us a spiritual ears to, to hear your word and a spiritual heart, O oh Heavenly Father, to, to be obedient. Lord, we ask that you bless this bread, which represents your bruised body, and we ask that you bless the fruit of the vine, which represents your blood you shed on Calvary. Lord, please forgive us of our sins, O oh Lord, in thoughts and in deeds, the things we do knowingly and unknowingly. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your church. Lord, we know that there is no place like this place near this place. We're in the right place this morning, and we thank you, O oh Heavenly Father. These things we ask in your Son, Jesus' name, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. Have we overlooked anyone? Has anyone been overlooked? Jesus, Jesus, Lord of
If you love Jesus, say amen. amen. If you're thankful for his blood, say amen. amen. And if you're standing here today because of his blood and because of his sacrifice, give him some praise right now. Amen. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and we're thankful. We want to welcome everybody to, our, to the Midwest Church of Christ and our family and friends day. It's good to see so many of you. We have a great number here, and there are others in the, in the overflow. We're appreciative of all those that have come. We just wanted an excuse to be able to fellowship with our family and friends. That's all. We've missed you all. The pandemic has kept us away. But as we're starting to get vaccinated and things of that nature, we can start coming back together. And we're praying that today that you all have been blessed and that you've seen Jesus thus far. We're appreciative of all those that worked this uh, so far. Appreciative of Brother Kyle for leading our song service on this morning. But right now I'm up before you. I have the distinct privilege to be able to introduce our guest speaker on today. Um, he comes to us all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana, by way of Arkansas. Uh, he's a country boy in the big city. But we're so thankful that he came to us in the person of Brother Dexter Smith. Um, he brings us greetings from the Kingsley Terrace Church of Christ, where Brother Stanley Hubbard is a senior minister. Um, he serves as, as song leader and, 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 and youth minister there, and we're appreciative of his gifting. Um, he came in this weekend. If you, first off, if you weren't here last night, you missed a treat. We had a good time at the virtual concert. I hope you all tuned in. If y'all didn't have a good time, I had a good time. Um, but if you didn't hear him last night, Dexter sang his face off last night in ministry and we're thankful for the gift. He's a double barrel. He's a singer and he's also a great gospel preacher. Um, he, brought, he brought us the word this morning in our 830 service talking about when God calls you to lead. Um, if you didn't hear that lesson, you need to go back and look at it because so many of us run away from our calling and run away from what God has for us. But when God has set you up to be able to lead and to lead out and to do his will, you got to be ready for it to do so. And so I'm not going to hold you any longer. Um, like I said, he's a singer. I don't know if he feel like singing or what. Um, I don't know if I, I, I have a couple of requests. Um, so I don't, I don't know what he want to do. But um, he said he want to do I love to praise him. I'd like to hear I need a church or um, in my heart or something like that, too. Whatever, whatever you feel like singing, um, but you ain't got your check yet. So, um, but whatever you feel <laughs> like singing. But after, the, after this song, the next voice you hear will be Brother Dexter Smith. Let's do it in my heart. Y'all know that? We sang it a whole bunch of times. All right, if you got Dexter, you got to clean it up. All right, uh, Sopranos. This is, I need everybody's participation on this one. All right, Sopranos. In my heart, Lord, please in my heart, in my heart, Lord, please in my heart. Sopranos, do it again.
to praise him. Come on, we can keep on going. We can keep on going. If we just remember what happened last week to us, we can keep on going and give him praise because we know that God is a good God and he's worthy of all the praise. It's a blessing to be back. In this place, All right. All right. we walked from here over to the gym for Bible study. You came from your house to here. God is good. Because at any moment, he could have took us away from, from me just walking here to there. From you just getting into your car and making it here. So somebody ought to be thankful that God has been a good God. I just, again, I just want to uh, give my thanks to uh, the leadership of uh, this congregation, to uh, Dr. Stevenson and uh, Brother Poo Malone for extending the invitation for me to come in today to preach a word. And I'm so thankful that, uh, that I'm able to do that. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble this morning. <clears throat> Uh, but I, I did bring uh, my family with me. Right. Um, my two beautiful daughters, Brandy and Zoe. Just wave your hand so everybody can see who you are. <laughs> and my beautiful wife, Natalie. All right. Go ahead and lift your hand. You can stand if you want to. If you don't, that's all right. <laughs> Amen. But that's my wife, and she's fine, too. Amen. <laughs> she is fine. And I don't mind telling y'all that she's fine either. Amen. Because she's mine. <laughs> but there is a word from the Lord today. It can be finding in uh, the 91st division of Psalms, chapter, I mean, verses number one and two. That's the. 91st Division of Psalms, chapter 1, I mean, verse 91, verses 1 and 2. I keep messing that up. Amen. It's all right. And it reads, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadows of the Almighty. I'll read that again. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shelters of the Almighty. Verse number two says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God. I'll say that again. My God. I'm going to say it again. My God in whom I trust. Right. I'm going to say that again. My God, in whom I trust. Yeah. Every person in this sanctuary has dealt with moments when you needed to find your own space. A space where you can be free from worry, Pain, crying, doubts, and fears. A space that you can, can be sheltered and comforted from all things that you deal with from day to day. And some of you might look at me funny. You might, you might say, he don't know what he's talking about. But I would like to say that everyone has been at a point to where they wanted to feel protected. Am I the only one? Okay. Protection. Protection from what? Protection from people. Like your co-workers. Like some church folks. Your family. But here's the one that's crazy. And you, you're going to look at me crazy again. Sometimes you need protection from yourself. 
I'm going to say it again. Sometimes you need protection from yourself. It's also said that, 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 that we have, we, we've heard the saying that an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So listen, the, the minute that you allow the devilish things to take hold of your mind, you are allowing him to corrupt your space. I'm going to say that again. The moment that you allow devilish things to take hold of your mind, you are allowing him to corrupt your space. Sometimes we go, and we, 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 we go find that spot, but we don't put God in that spot. We go find a spot, but we never put God in that spot. And when somebody talking bad about us and somebody got something to say or, or, or you got some kind of t a lust in your heart, or you got some addiction going on in your mind, that thing right there, the devil will get in and he will put all that stuff that you weak at, he will place it on your heart. But understand, you have to have God in your space. Psalms 91 and uh, verses 1 and 2, it, the Psalms open up with the statement of assurance of God's protection, yeah. which he provides all to those that avail themselves. Yeah. The two lines, verses 1, are synonymous, dwell and abide, right. shelter and shadow, yeah. the most high and the almighty. The verb in this verse is translate abides. Catch this. Just spend the night. Come on, right. hey. You ever heard that song that said, spend the night yeah. with me tonight? God just simply wants you to just spend the night. Here it is. In the, in the verse's shadow, shadow is probably just an illusion of the wings of Yahweh. So as we see the word dwell, it simply means to take residence in one's place. But the psalmist knew this, that this space or the shelter had to be in Jesus. In order to dwell there, there has to be a place. The psalmist has in mind a place to where there could be intercourse or there could be communion with God. And, and some of you uh, may look at these words and say, oh, that might be a bad thing. But no, that's not a bad thing because yeah. intercourse means just communicating. Yeah. And communion means we're just breaking bread together. Yeah. Something that you should already be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. You should be talking to God. You should be, you should be yearning for uh, his, 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 his power. You should be yearning to have uh, this discernment of the things that come your way. And some of you may describe this thing as to, to be an idle thing. So might the blind man say to the light of the, the glorious sun. And so might the deaf man say of music. But this thing is real. Your doubts and your reality lies in this. You yearn for him. You want close contact with God. You just simply want to be in his presence. And as we look at this thing, we, we, we understand when, 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 when we dwell, dwelling has to be a consistent thing. Yes, it, it can't be I dwell with you on Monday, yeah, yeah. go spend the night somewhere else on Tuesday, oh, back with you on Wednesday, yeah. spend the rest of the week with you Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday I'm out of here like oh, nothing okay. ever happened. It has to be a consistent thing. It has to be so consistent, you have to ask yourself this question. Did it lead you on yesterday? Yeah. Did it lead you on today? Yeah. And the day before that? And the day before that? And the day before that? But did it also lead you to cast your cares upon the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. And then is it grounded in the blood of Jesus? Yeah. It is, is it, is it a, 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 a confidence in, in reconciling? And pardoning and, and redeeming God. Yeah. See, sometimes we, 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 we find ourselves dwelling in something that we ought not to. Yeah. Sometimes we'll pick up that bottle to turn away our troubles. Yeah. 
And sometimes we might look at that video that we shouldn't be looking at that, yeah. to, to get our, our pain away. And sometimes we might just go out and just cut somebody out for the fun of it. Yeah. We find ourselves in the wrong place right. trying right. to find love that's not there. Yeah, all right. But understand that in the Bible it says that even Jesus went to heaven to sit down. Even Jesus had to realize he had to go to a place after he got done working. He had to sit at the right hand of the Father. He knew that there was a sign that it was his job was complete. He went to stay. He was in his permanent and forever dwelling place, one with the Father. Understanding that, understanding the blessings that the psalmist finds in habitation that he dwells in. Right. This is expressed as almost in the same terms in which conduct is expressed. Yeah. Understanding with, how many of y'all ever been to school and you got a report card? Right. It says yeah. A, B, yeah. English, yeah. reading, C, right. whatever your grade was. But there was a grade that simply says conduct. Conduct grade is simply on how you behave. Yeah. Were you good yeah. or were you bad? Yeah. But I want you to understand we, as we look at the word conduct, we look at it from a spiritual point that, that, that God shows his conduct by the love that he gives to you. Yeah. That's right. That's right. He shows you his conduct of how he protects you and how he keeps you from harm's way. But all he's saying is that you have to get inside of me. Yeah. You have to, your thoughts have to be close to my thoughts. Yeah. Come on, man. And your ways have to be close to my ways because you can't be perfect because you're going to mess up. And if you don't mess up, you don't need me. Yeah, right. And understand that God is a jealous God. Yeah. He put us here just so he could save us. Yeah. So understanding that his conduct is great. His conduct is is, it, is it expressed in this way. He, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall. shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. That's simply his conduct. But understand, it's also a privilege. Yes, you just don't get a chance to just come to God in any kind of way. You got to come to him in a way to where he can receive you. Yes. Or vice versa, you can receive him. You have to be willing to take up a place with him. And understanding that if you need a refuge, let God be your refuge. Take habitation and he will be your habitation. Seek, in, seek shelter in him and he will be your shelter. Go to him for refreshment and he will refresh you. Delight yourself in him and he, and he will give you the desires of thine heart. That's right. That's right. Dwelling with God also allows us to, to build a personal bond. Just like the ones you would have with your own parents. All right. You couldn't walk up to anybody else's parents right now that, you, that did not birth you and expect to have the same relationship with them because they, you have not been around them. You have not dwelled in their place. You have not taken up any residency with them. You haven't allowed them to take care of you in the way that their parents should. So I know that I just couldn't walk up to Brother Burns and say, hey, uh, 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 you got some money? I, 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 need, I, I need that, you know, uh, uh, I spent up all of mine. Can you, can you give me a little bit? I can't do that with him. Because we haven't built that relationship with him. And if I ask him that, even though we build that relationship, he's going to look at me crazy anyway. Like, what you do with your money? <laughs> Understand this is how God treats us. We got we to gotta make sure that we come to him as wholeheartedly as we should. Yeah. So building that relationship with him. Yeah. Spending a, bit, a special time with him. The psalmist understood yeah. that having that time with God creates a new atmosphere. That's right. That's right. I'm going to say that again. That's right. 
The psalmist understands that having a personal time with God creates a new atmosphere. You wonder why did your world been so chaotic? Because your atmosphere is so crazy and that you kept God out of it. Yeah, yeah. But spending time with him in that atmosphere would allow it to change. Yeah, It'll turn your bad to good. Yeah. It'll turn your sad to happiness. It'll turn your trials and tribulations to triumphs. Yeah, if you dwell with him. In the shadows of the almighty, there is something about uh, this word shadow that always, that's always interesting for, for, for there, is, there has never been a shadow without light. There has never been a shadow without light. Thus, the secret place must be a place of brightness. It's a place where God is near for all things. To me, in the sunlight, as I, as I journey in my shadow, he who walks in my shadow or rests in my shadow must be very near to me. So that when I'm in the shadows of God, I can simply reach forth my hands and touch him. And I can lift up my eyes and I can see him face to face. I know that there's a sense that which God is always near us. And he's also in all things and everywhere. But there is something about a secret presence which each and every one of us. We will be considered a stranger until we learn how to dwell with God. All right. All right. So this shadow that is being talked about are the hands of God. I need you to understand that, that when you dwell and get under the covering of the Almighty, this will, allow you, this will allow him to lay his hands on you. And then you will understand when it says in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valleys in the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. And then you will understand in Isaiah chapter 54 and verse number 17 where he simply says, no weapon that's forced against me right. shall prosper. Right. Through faith and, and worship and prayer, yes, we are protected from evil forces, both internal mm -hmm. and external. Right. Because we simply commit ourselves to the righteous will of the Lord. Just because, I, I want you to understand that just because that you are under God's care does not stop. Listen to me now. Just because you are under God's care does not stop storms from happening. That's right, that's right. I'm going to say this again. Just because you are under God's care does not stop storms from happening around us. But it will provide incredible strength and and, and protection for every battle that you face in this life. But the storms would never take full reign. And understand that right in the midst of the storm, he reminds us that you are held secure by the almighty God. Can I get a witness this morning? You may find sometimes that the winds will shift you to and fro. And you may hear the thunder roar real loud around you. And you may see darkness all around you and sometimes you might just see a little rain all around you but understand that you are in the protection of the almighty yeah, that's right, that's right. and you're loved and understand that that when you're facing you're facing these things you are not by yourself oh, that's right, that's right. how many of you ever felt by yourself yeah. when, when, when the death of a loved one has come in how many of you have, have felt, felt by yourself when you had family members that turn their backs on you or just walk away? When you had close friends that you thought were your friends, they just walk away from you. How many of you have felt by yourself when you sat in your home and your lights was cut off? And you didn't have nobody to give you any resources to do anything. You felt alone. 
These are storms. Yes, sir. Listen to me now. These are storms yes. that are all around you. And some of them has consumed you. But God is saying, listen, if you just dwell inside of me, come to me. Come on. I will make sure that when the winds get to blowing, that you always are protected. Yeah. When the storms of life beat you down, you can always find rest yeah. in me. Mm -hmm. As I look at verses number two, it simply says, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge That's right. and my fortress yeah. my God in him I trust yeah. refuge fortress Come on. I know that right now if this thing was made of steel whatever it is that Sometimes I, I know that when, when, when the elements of life are trying to get at me, yeah. I know I can hide behind this. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Where can't nobody see me. Yeah. I know that when you shoot your darts at me, I'm protected. I'll never be hit. Yeah. Come on. I know that when I hide behind this from battling with all the things of this world, I know that I can come in my refuge and find rest. Yeah. In this fortress that's, 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 that is built to, to protect me from everything of this world. I simply trust the structure that is built around this. And know that in finding refuge, in finding my, getting inside of my fortress, I have to trust in him. And this is where me dwelling inside of this fortress allows me to have a soul experience of God. All right. All right. Amen. A soul experience of God. We are simply made of flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part flesh, part spirit. That's right. And we have to understand that, that once this flesh is done being fed, we got to feed yeah. Come on. spirit. So we have to understand that we have to experience God. The humblest, of, the humblest child of God has a, a great weapon forged for his defense mm -hmm. of a spiritual truth. As, a, as most of us have learned, they each have an experience of God. And that is a weapon which can never be blunted by the intellectual prey. Because we understand, I'm telling the devil will dress something up and make it look like it's the best thing that's ever happened in your life, which is the wrong thing for your life. So with me having uh, the, the, the wealth of such a soul experience with God allows him to be my refuge from trouble, from sorrow, from despair. A lot of us have dealt with that. A lot of us are going through that. And a lot of us are still in that. Yeah. But here's what he said. He said, he is my fortress. Yeah. The force arrayed against the soul are not merely powers in which are coerced. And if it yields their best, some of the forces that are antagonized our position of the soul are at such a times like these. What a fortress yeah. was the people of the ancient days. A place of secure defense. So God has now become your psalmist. That's right. That's right. God is speaking a song to you. Yeah. Come, to me, Come to me, all ye that labor right. and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Yeah. He said, Take. My yoke of right. and learn of me. Right. He's given you a song yeah. that you can come to him. Yeah. We always say at the end of a sermon, we extend the invitation and there's always a song. Yeah. There's always a song that brings you closer. Yeah. But God has already given you a song. Yeah. Right. 
He's already saying, come unto me. But he is my God. This is an advance upon the other two utterance. It is a grand thing to be able to say to anyone that he's my refuge. But it's a better thing to say that he's my fortress, my protector. But at the same time, at the highest point of my happy experience with God, I can simply say that he's my friend and he's my companion and he's also my confidant. As a result of a soul experience with God in him, I'll trust or have faith in God. Amen. See, this is a, an experiment, experiment of the soul and spiritual things that are only the only way that you can have a fuller knowledge and be more blessed in this experience. You no longer need a scientist to tell you that God is good. Despite of your circumstances. You don't need a scientist to say that, 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 uh, that God is, is the one who can provide clarity for you. You don't need a scientist to say that God can protect you if you stand behind this. But understanding that your experience with God or in Christ or the Holy Spirit shall never alter it should always enlarge itself. Yes, sir. It should always be purified. Yeah. It should always be intensified. Uh -huh. This is the will of God concerning you. you. Yeah. That's right. yeah. That's right. What are you in order to attain a better experience right. with God? You are in the right place at the right time this morning uh -huh. yeah. to experience what God has for you. You are at the right place at the right time to experience God's love. You are at the right place at the right time to experience yeah. his blessings over your life. Now is the time that we get back to being in the presence of God. The one who protects us from dangerous territories. Yeah. We must allow God will to keep us from being praise of sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a critical time like this that, that we must trust no one but God. Yeah, right. But we must find ourselves yeah. as children of God trying to lean on. We, we find ourselves as children of God trying to lean on something that is not of God's will. But listen here, the Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. We got to learn how to stop trusting in man's will. And we got to understand that God's will is far greater than anything. So as I close, we, we must understand that our loyalty to, to God is better than our loyalty to man. Right. And we must need, we need to realize that, that, that my presence with God yeah. is more beneficial to know that there is protection when I'm near him. Yeah. And even this a sense of knowing that I can rest my mind from all the worrying, from all the doubts, from all the crying, and all the pain that man has caused me. And sometimes my own self-afflictions. So I have no doubt I have no doubt. And you shouldn't doubt either. You should never doubt God's love for you. Amen. You should never doubt God's covering over you. Yeah. Yeah. We need to draw closer to him. Yeah. And the psalmist also knew that, that God as a protector, there is nothing or no one could ever harm them. Because of who the psalmist has put his trust in. That's right, that's right. So as I close, this is why I trust God. In my dark days of trouble yeah. and confusion, God will shine his merciful light 
and provide clarity in my life. In my moment of weakness, God will provide strength. How many of you have ever been weak before? God will provide strength for you in all situations to where you feel torn down from this life. God will build you back up if you only just trust him. If you trust him, when your world is full of chaos, God will bring you peace and God will bring you joy. In the moment to where your loved one is gone from here, God will give you comfort in the midst of your storm. Even when you run out of, out of money, more than you have the month, God will provide a way from you. All you have to do is just simply trust him and get inside of him and just dwell in the shadows of the Almighty. God is my refuge. In him I have safe retreat. God is my protector. God will also provide. And I just need you to simply do this for me today. Whether it's good or whether it's bad. Whatever the decisions you have to make for your life. I need you to just simply trust God. There's somebody in here who is not trusting. There's somebody in here who needs to put their faith more in Christ. There's somebody in here who does not know who he is in the pardons of their sins. But here is the moment to where you've heard the word. And now we want you to take the steps to believing in the word. And after you've done that, I want you to repent of those things that, 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 that you have done. And after you repent and change your ways from what you were doing, simply just confess that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And after you make that bold confession, it simply just come down to the last step of, 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 of your action to just get in the water and be baptized. Because understand that once you dwell in the blood of Jesus, yeah. you're covered. Yeah. 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 Something may happen to your physical body, but I guarantee your soul will never be touched because you have a covering. Right now, you are outside of the covering. You are outside of your fortress, and you need God to be your refuge. Yes, so that all the things that, that has beaten you down, you can simply find Rest. That's right, that's right. So as we, 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 we stand and sing the song of invitation, there might be somebody who has a covering. And you fell out of that one. Yes, sir. And you just need to be reconciled back with God. Yes. Here is your chance today. God is singing his song to you. Yes. He said, come unto me. Yes. I need you back in my, my presence. I need to be the one that protects you because what you have out here, there's nothing for you. Yeah. I know you've gone through some, some hurt inside of the church. I know you've gone through some hurt inside of your own family, but I need you to come back to me. Yeah. I need you to work for me. I, I need you to do the things that I've called you to do. That's right. yeah. I need you to be back into the fold. Will you simply just trust God yeah. as we together stand and sing? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peace of shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry.
let the church say amen. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. my goodness. Need to be covered, brother, by that blood. I'm thankful to God that he has blessed us to have Brother Dexter come in and remind us of this great covering we have. He promised us that he would never leave us, neither would he forsake us. Some of y'all can testify to that if you would. And so we are thankful for the sermon this morning uh, at 8.30 and 10.30. The brother preached, and we're thankful for that. Sister Curry is standing. Sister Marion. I got a call from Brother Sam Elliott this week, and he's going to have surgery. He has to go in quarantine for two weeks, and he asked for special prayer. Amen. And uh, please pray for me. I had a, I, I missed a step this morning. I, I hurt my back a little bit. Oh, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Sister Curry, you want to give us those on, online? Yes, Sister Natalie Carney asking for special prayers for everything that she's going through at this time. Pray for everyone in her family. Uh, Sister Angelica Robertson, prayers for her health and family. Sister Olivia Hanley, prayers for me that I get a good report from the doctor on Monday. Amen. Special prayers for my family and friends and Cheyenne. Sister Amanda Smith, prayers for me and my family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I ask for prayer for Brother, Jerry. Brother Brown is asking for prayer. And I think all of us, if we were truthful, we all stand in need of prayer. I don't know anybody that's the, the greatest, the greatest problem that we all face in our lives is when we can say, I can do this on my own. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, don't, don't, that's fool, that's, that's fool's gold. It may look like gold, but it ain't gold. That's right. you, you need God. You say, well, this is just a small thing. I go to God in the big things. It, it, you, you won't do right in the big things if you haven't done right in your little things. Yeah. 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 Jesus said, he that is faithful in little That's right. will be faithful in much. Right. So, so God knows he, you need him. I need him. Every day. Every moment. <laughs> my next sermon is going to be God's timing is better than my planning. I might have some plans, but <laughs> I promise you, I promise you, when God, the old folks used to 
used to pray. You remember that, uh, Sister Rose? Old folks used to say, uh, the Lord may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. That's right. That's the way God is. So, Brother Dexter, thank you for letting us, reminding us it's the Lord we need in everything we have. Bow with me. Father, have mercy upon us this day. You are God. And we are not confused that you are the maker and sustainer of life. In you, oh God, when the storm rages, you can speak to the storm and say, peace be still. When the fire comes upon us, they talk about us in, in all corners and, it, and it's the heat. You may be in the fire, but the fire won't touch you. Brothers and sisters, we need to call on Jesus, who is our author and finisher of our faith. The request that's been made today, oh God, we, read, we give them to you. You already knew what they needed. Even those that didn't know what to say, let your spirit, your Holy Spirit, offer up to prayers and supplication for all of us for we all stand in need of prayer. Go with us today. Thank you for our, our medium to be able to worship with our people there on, uh, on the electronic devices. We're able to worship you. We don't cheat your worship. We don't take away from it. We go through all of the worship so your people, even though they're not here, they're able to worship the Lord our God. All right. Now go with us today, O oh God, and bless our being together. In the name of Jesus, let us together say amen. Amen. The possession of money is not in and of itself a bad thing. Paul's word to Timothy about money, 1 Timothy 6.10, was not an indictment of money, but a warning about the danger of worshiping it. Money makes a poor idol. When worship, it plunges souls into spiritual and physical ruin. If money is your God, it will be greed, greed, and envy, which will damage human relationships and distract you from your God-given mission. The way of a Christian is one of generosity. We hold our resources loosely, and God allows us to experience the blessing and joy of giving. We don't give because God in heaven desperately needs our cash, but because he allows us to demonstrate our love for him by releasing a portion of what he has given us. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. We've come to the part of the service where it's time to give as the Lord has prospered us. We have several ways to give here at Midwest. You could um, give by Cash App, or you could go on our website. Uh, some of you have done a great job even mailing in your tithes to us. Uh, we just like to thank you, Midwest. You all are doing a wonderful job with this. Uh, let's not forget our jars for Christ. You know, get you a coffee can or a, any kind of jar and just start putting your pennies and your nickels and dimes in it. And just bring it on in. Uh, we, we use that to, for, for the betterment of Midwest here. That's right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before thee now, Lord, thanking thee for giving us our jobs. Thanking thee, Lord, for, for the stimulus checks. 
Lord, it's not the Republicans or the Democrats as to why we got our stimulus check. We know it is because of you, Lord. You could have stopped that if you wanted to. We just want to say thank you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. See what the Lord has done, and see what the Lord has done. Where you ought to count your many blessings, and see what the Lord has done. Can't you see what the Lord has done? Can't you see what the Lord has done? You ought to count your many blessings, see what the Lord. Sister Onda Sharp is asking us to pray for her health and family and Christian walk um, and for Brother Floyd Baker and the entire Christian family. Sister Dorothy Knight is asking us to pray for her health and family and children and please pray for me that I might be having operation on my wrist. And also for Crystal Knight, um, Trinita Thomas, and uh, the late uh, uh, and the Walker family. Uh, let's keep them in prayer. So re remember, remember them. We want to, how many, how many uh, are in here is 16 years of age and above? So you're 16 and above. Let me see. Now, those of you that are 16 and above and have not had your uh, shot, your vaccination, let me see you hold your hands. You see y'all holding them down off the slope. We need you to get online, register today, and get down to the African American Heritage Center this coming Saturday the 27th, the 27th, at what time, what time? Brother Tony, you got anything else you want to say about that? I covered it? All right, well, as long, long as I covered it. All right. Let, they, they, we, we need you to get that done, okay? Don't cheat the rest of us, nor yourself. So let's keep, let's do that. May uh, and if you have not brought in your bag, uh, blessing in a bag, get that in by Wednesday. I know it said Saturday, but get it in by Wednesday so we'll know where we are and what we have to ask you to do specifically for that. A beautiful ministry, beautiful ministry where you can just, you can just let your heart be do, doing a little bitty things 
and God will bless your heart. That's a, that's a good heart ministry. That's what I call it. It's a good heart ministry. And, and my baby, my grandbaby, she knows what I'm talking about. Both of them know what I'm talking about. Having, a, I pray to God that they have good hearts. That's what, man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing better than having a good heart. God bless you. But John's got some things he wants to share with us. Yes, I'm not going to hold you long. Um, once again, I just wanted to make mention of our sisters. We thank for all those that came out on yesterday to our sisters. Um, celebration on yesterday morning. They had a really good time, I understand. Thanks for all those that organized that. We have a very powerful ladies ministry here at the Midwest Church. And yesterday they took a little bit of time out to show appreciation to Sister Arnetta Horton. Um, and all that she means to us here at the Midwest Church. She's meant so much to so many, um, and we're thankful for her and just being able to know her um, and to call her our sister. And so we're just appreciative of all those that worked yesterday. I want to personally thank all those that tuned in for the virtual concert on last night. Um, if you didn't, you missed a treat. We had a really good time. Um, we thank you for all for tuning in. We pray that you all will be blessed. Next Sunday. Um, will be um, where the sisters have their classes in between, um, which means that we'll have men's and women's classes next Sunday in, in place of Bible study. So y'all come ready um, for that. We'll have a good time. We've been having some strong Bible studies the past couple of weeks in the adult class. I don't know about y'all, but we've been having a good time. So please come out next week. Um, right after we dismiss, y'all remain seated. Um, we'll have we have a quick meeting we need to give y'all some information as soon as we dismiss um, we need all the leadership in so whoever's in I think for the Curry's over in the gym and anybody else that's in the gym we need you to go ahead and come over as soon as we dismiss don't move we only take about five or ten minutes we promise um, we just got to give you some information when we dismiss if there is nothing else let us have um, a verse of a song and a closing prayer thank you all so much It's in my veins, it's in my veins, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is running warm, you know it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my way down in my My veins, Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is running warm, you know it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my veins. Let us go to God in prayer at this time. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for calling you, being able to call you, Father. We thank you for this service and this worship. We thank you for the word that was brought by your man, servant, Brother Dexter Smith. Dear God, we're so thankful for him. Um, and all that he means to the kingdom. We pray that you continue to bless him and crown his head with wisdom. Lord, bless this congregation and the work that we're trying to do here. Bless all those. Bless Sister Crenshaw um, as she's asking prayer for her brother-in-law. We pray that he get a good report, dear God. Lord, we ask a special prayer for Sister Dorothy Knight. Um, she's asking prayer for her family and the operation that she may have to have. We pray that you just heal her and pray that she don't even have to have it, dear God. Bless Crystal and all the things that they're going through and all of those. We also ask a special prayer for Brother Floyd Baker. Um, and the entire family, his family's Christian walk. Father, there's no one else like you. There's no one above you. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
we want all the all the deacons if y'all can come to the towards the front all the deacons if y'all can come towards the front and sit over in brother Joe's area all the deacons brother Burton brother McGill One, two, three. Thank you, Brother Curry. Y'all give him a hand. So today, Brother Curry, we knew it was your birthday this past Friday. I believe you turned uh, years old. And we're thankful. We want to take time. We appreciate you for what you do here at the Midwest Church. The Midwest Church could not do anything. We would not be here the way we are if it were not for you, Brother Curry. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. There's a scripture that I want to read that I thought, when I read it, I thought of you. Paul said this in the book of 1 Corinthians 15. He said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and then he said, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so today we want to take a moment and just appreciate you and tell you that we love you, Brother Curry. And, and you know, you can't have such a, such a moment like this if you don't get a plaque. <laughs> if you don't get a plaque says, we thank you, D Deacon Richard Curry. I want y'all to know, he's been called Deacon Curry for almost 20 years <laughs> by, by, by some folk that comes over here and we feed every, every day this church is feeding somebody. And right there at the top of the list, picking up and passing out food to everybody, Brother Richard Curry. And so this past this October, uh, he, along with four other great men of God, were ordained uh, officially as deacon of the Midwest Church of Christ. Here's, here's a plaque, Brother Curry. We thank you, Deacon Curry, for the, your many years of dedicated and consistent kingdom work. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. The Midwest Church of Christ. 21, 20, 21, 2021. Amen. The, the beginning of the next 100 years. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Now, Brother Curry, so many appreciate you. And if we let everybody talk, we'll be here till Jesus come back. So what we did, the church, everybody has written you thank you cards and thank you notes just saying how much you mean to them. And if you have not filled yours out, get you one and get it to him before he leaves. We want to make sure that you really understand what you mean to us. Amen. That's it. That's it. And, and this, church, this church knows um, what Brother Curry and, you know, has been to uh, my ministry in this church. A lot of things. You can't do things by yourself. Amen. I learned that a long time ago. And 
God is God sent a man. God sent a faithful man. Amen. We got here because you know God. God gives you gives. Now, I, I don't have to be ashamed of that. God, I know God speaks to me and gives me His vision as to what He wants to see among His people. That's right. But let me tell y'all something. God knew we had to have somebody to help put it together. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, I, I, one time I was a five-talent man. But through age That's right. and trials, I'm now just a two-talent guy. <laughs> and I want you to know, God has still got this guy, amen, as a five-talent guy. <laughs> And oh, how I'm glad. Amen, brother. We love you. God bless you, brother. Amen. Thank you, Midwest. Thank you. Love all of you. And one more quick surprise. Um, because it's your birthday, we got to get you a birthday present, too. So the church is sending you and your beautiful wife out to a dinner at Ruth Chris Steakhouse. That's what I'm talking about. So y'all go and y'all enjoy y'all self. Amen. And y'all have y'all selves a good time. Thank you, Brother Curry. We love you. All right. God bless you. If there's nothing else, you've been dismissed.